Quote, now Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in age. And what happens ordinarily for women at sea is for Sarah, Genesis 18, 11. So Isaac belongs originally and as a miracle to God alone. Quote, nothing, neither word nor deeds is impossible for God. At the same re at the same season next year, I will return to your home and Sarah will have a son. And in fact, quote, God visited Sarah as he had said and did for her as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in her old age at the time that God has indicated, 21.1. In this way, by right, Isaac, the son of the promise by God omnipotence, by divine omnipotence, come to Abraham only as a pure gift, unexpected because beyond every hope, entirely as what he would have possessed and engendered of his own. But this gift nevertheless disappears as soon as Isaac appears as such. That is to say, as the son of Abraham, more precisely as what Abraham claims under the title of his son, I quote 21.3, <clears throat> to the son who was born to him, given birth by Sarah, Abraham gives the name Isaac. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a large banquet when they weaned Isaac. In effect, Sarah as well appropriate Isaac as her son just as much. <coughs> Quote, I have given a son in his old age to Abraham, 21.7. Since she drives out as a competitor the other natural born son who Abraham had with Agar. And the call that God addresses to Abraham only aims at denouncing explicitly this double abusive appropriation of Isaac by Abraham and by Sarah. Take your son, your only, your only, the one you cherish. Because Isaac precisely is not the possession of Abraham, who therefore does not have to cherish him as his own possession. The demand of a sacrifice opposed to this illegitimate appropriation, which denies the gift given into a possession, the most original right of the giver to have his gift acknowledged as a gift given, that is to say, simply conceded by always provisional, transferable, usufruct. Quotation, go to the land of Moria and there you will offer him in sacrifice. Abraham hears him asking not so much to kill his son, to lose him, or to give possession of him back to God, according to the usual concept of gift and sacrifice, as first and above all, to give back to him his status as a gift precisely to return Isaac to his status as a gift given by God by reducing it, taking it back, to the process of givenness itself. And Abraham accomplishes this in an explicit and clear manner as one cannot imagine. Isaac, Isaac who still thinks according to the common concept of gift, no, notices, of course, that his father does not have, that is to say, does not possess, any good available to sacrifice, to destroy, to exchange in the framework of contract. But where is the lamb for the sacrifice? 22.7. Abraham, who already thinks according the phenomenological concept of sacrifice, so to skip, so to say, as a gift given, reduced to givenness, answers instead, quote, God will provide the lamb for sacrifice, 22.8, which means that God decides everything, here including what one will offer one, including what one will offer him. Thus, that neither Abraham nor even Isaac will not be able to give anything to God save what God will have first himself in the first place given to them.
in a word, that every gift made to God will come first from God as a gift given to us. The place of sacrifice is thus called God provides, providers. 22.14. We must note here that the Hebrew say yira, from the root yira, to see, to foresee, to see to it. But that the Septuagint understands to translate to the to a use of Hira, first for the name Abraham gives to the mountains, which is Moira, God saw Aden, Aden, which is an aorist of Orao. And then at the second use of Hira, the Greek uh, translation says, in that case, <coughs> Ofte which is God appeared, which is a, a passive aorist of Orao. So everything happens in this double translation in Greek of the same Yira in Hebrew. Everything <coughs> happens as if the fact that God sees and provides, that is, give the offering for the, the sacrifice, would mean at the same moment that God shows himself. When God gives something to be given back to the giver, this, that is, when God makes the gift visible, this is equivalent to the appearing of the giver, in that case God, that is the process of givenness. Abraham and he alone, not Isaac, the sees that God alone gives the gift of, sacrifice, of the sacrifice so that as a result God appears to him. But he had already recognized God as the giver of gifts as soon as he has finally agreed to recognize Isaac as for him the most important among the gifts given by God and, then, and thus due to God. So it, is no longer, it no longer matters whether Abraham kills, eliminate, or exchange his son to the prophet of God in order to accomplish the sacrifice, according to the common concept of sacrifice. It matters rather, and exclusively according to the phenomenal concept of the gift, that Abraham has acknowledges his son as a gift that he accomplishes this recognition of the gift by giving him back to his giver, and thus that he let God appears, appear through the gift, rightly recognized as a gift given. And in this way, God does hear him by, and exhaust him by sparing, sparring Isaac. In the condition of seeing, indeed, that by restraining him from killing his heart, God precisely does not refuse the sacrifice of Abraham, but <coughs> only uh, suppress his being put to death, because this putting to death does not belong to the essence of sacrifice. The actual death of Isaac would have only satisfied sacrifice in the common concept, destruction, disposition, exchange, and contract. In fact, God lets Abraham go just to the point of sacrifice, but understood according to its phenological concept, the recognition of Isaac as a gift received from God and due to God. And in order to recognize it, it is only needed for Abraham to admit the loss of Isaac, an acknowledgement accomplished perfectly well without his being put to death, but from its acceptance as a boundless gift. Quote, the angel said, do not stretch out your hand over the child, do not harm to him, I know now for that you fear God, you have not refused me, your own son and only son. By refusing to let Isaac be put to death, God does not thereby refuse acknowledgement of the gift presented by Abraham, and does so by accepting the sacrifice all the more, understood this time in the strict phenomenological sense. By sparing Isaac from now on recognized as a gift, 
God re-gives him to him, gives him a second time, and by presenting a gift by a redundancy, which consecrates it forever as a gift from now on. <coughs> the sacrifice redoubles the gift and gives confirmation to the gift as such for the first time. Thank you very much. Is there any sense in the phenomenology of the gift that it makes a difference that the gift is given from abundance as opposed to the gift costing the giver? That this makes a difference. Uh, the, the, the issue about the gift uh, from a theoretical point of view is just that the paradox of the fact that a given gift as such, has to disappear as a gift. That's the paradox. That is, the fact to achieve a gift uh, result into a being, a plain thing, which bear no, uh, no trace, no mark of having been given. And so this makes in his own visibility the gift disappear. And it's why it's, I understand sacrifice as suspending the result of the process of the gift, the apparent and real self-sufficiency of the given thing, by suspending it, reducing, putting it into bracket, it makes possible to see again through uh, the given gift, the process of givenness itself.